Okay, so in this example, we're going to take a model that we've created in Blockbench and bring it into Godot. So first thing I'm just going to do is just make sure I've got Godot set up. So what I'm going to have is I'm just going to made, made a folder in my project. I'm going to make a new scene. It's just going to be plain old 3D scene. I'll just call this example animation import because I'm just going to get rid of this later and I'll just add a few extra little pieces to this such as just a static body for the floor and we'll add a collision shape onto that and we'll also add a mesh node or mesh instance and that mesh instance will just have just a plain mesh on it and that collision shape we will just have say a world boundary and I'm just going to resize that mesh out to 20 by 20 just so it matches up key thing always remember when you're playing around with collision shapes always go into the actual shape and modify its size from in here on the actual world boundary don't modify the scale because that can cause the collisions to not work so I've now got my environment uh, obviously if I run this pressing F6 we're not going to see anything so let's go and add a camera to this hit the preview no, we're still not seeing it all Okay, that's good enough. Obviously, once again, it's still dark. So let's go and add a light. So we're going to add a directional light from distance. And now, remember, by default, when this comes in, it's facing along there. So let's turn it so it faces down. And we've got our light lighting up our scene. So now we've at least got our environment. Now I'm going to switch back to Blockbench. And so here's my little character that I prepared earlier. It's got some broken animations on it. But this is going to do what we need it to do. Now, things to note. If we go back to our edit, as it stands, when the way Godot works is that any mesh, whether it's name, it'll just bring in and it'll bring the textures in. If you want it to have a collision shape on it, we need to append that to the end. So I'm actually just going to open up the main parts of the body and actually put minus col on the end for collision or collider. That will enable collision detection on this. I'm going to leave left and right legs actually not to have collisions on them. And actually, let's make the sphere of the head have a collision on it, but not the torus. This is actually really useful for building your environments in here. So we've got this created. So now I'm going to go file, export, GLTF model. Make sure embed textures and export animations because that will include all the information we want. Confirm it. Go to the folder that your work is in. So I'm just going to jump to that folder now. And I've got a title of it. I'm going to hit save. Minimize, switch back in. And we can now see it's imported our horror mech. I'm going to open it up. Double check everything's in here. Now, with this, what we need to do is go and export the animation. So I'm going to go to actions. I'm going to set an animation save path. And just usually where I've got that actual mesh i'm going to save that animation into there so this is a resource that has all the different animations that we've actually got so we can choose the ones we want to get i'm just going to set the paths hit re-import and we'll notice now that file that we created before animation model movement so the one that we created in godot is now here now what i need to do is bring 
my design into the game. So I'm going to bring this in, put it on. Let's just check it works first. Yep, so we've fallen in there. Obviously, because it doesn't have any other kinetic bodies or things like that, it's just going to sit there. But what I want to now do is on my horror mech, add a child node. I'm going to add an animation player. This handles all the animations. Now, by default, it doesn't have it in here. We can go and make our own animations, such as if we want to just move this around. So I'm going to make a new animation. Let's call it movement location. I'm just going to start it here. And what I'm going to do is go and put in a keyframe, but how this works is a little bit different. I'm going to click on its position. Yeah, then I'll go out to wherever I want it to be. I can say rotate it round. You can even make it drop down. Or spin. Each time I move it, I've got to click it's anything I've changed. Let's say back to two. So we'll just change our length to three seconds for this. On two, we're going to bring out here, come back up, and we're going to leave those there. We'll just reset those back to zero, zero, zero. But this time we're going to change our scale. So our character is going to get a bit bigger and maybe we'll move them up. And then lock, lock, lock. And we can see those three have been added in. And I can preview this by just hitting the play button. You see it doesn't do anything for those last couple of seconds. What I might do is let's make it invisible at that point. So let's try that again. Note the visible is actually applying to everything. So probably not a useful one that we want to actually play with at this point. But what I will do is let's just scale it back down on that last frame. I will play that animation. Let's see what it looks like in the camera. Okay, character's not there because we turned visibility off. Now if you do want to delete any of these entirely, you can just click that remove track. And we've got a character that is sort of sitting here. Now, by default, our animations don't actually play. So we can click the auto play on load, press F6, and our animation is running. So that's us going and adding in one of our own animations that we've started. But if we want to actually go and import one of the other ones, what we're going to do is click on this edit button. Oh, sorry, not the edit button. We're actually going to go to animation, go to manage animations. Now, if we don't have a library, we can actually go and add one in. So library is a collection of animations. I might call this test block bench, because it's ones that are coming from there. We can click on the little Edit plus to add an animation, which will make our own, or we can use the little folder to load one in. And lo and behold, here's the animation that we exported earlier. So I can click on that, click OK. And now what I'm actually going to do is set that to be my current animation. And it's set to autoplay. So let's go and run that. Okay, note we've now got this other animation on here. What we want to do is, if we look at this, the current one that would play is movement location. So when we actually run this, that other animation is going to play. If we want to switch it over, so we're going to go back to our animation tab, choose that one, and then make sure we Click autoplay on load. So that will tell it 
this is the animation we want to run and we can set it to loop if we need to or actually auto reverse so let's have a look what happens so we've got it sitting there and it's just spinning around so that's quite cool oh my mouse is about to die so what i can also show is let's go and get a couple running at the same time so let's go and add another animation player yeah this time we're just going to go animation manage animations make a new library second animation add in that file again i'm going to auto load that one i'll switch this other one back so that movement location is the first one and now when i hit f6 to preview it all we've actually got both animations playing concurrently so that's how we can add animations into godot from blockbench gltf is an absolutely amazing tool because we can do all the painting drawing of models editing with them it's brilliant take care good luck